Okay, so we're just having a listen on a TS950 SDX, and um, these are a um, beautiful radio. They're just really uh, very sought after. Not too many of them uh, getting around these days. I think that's a New Zealander there, just on a 10 metre antenna, which is quite amazing, isn't it? On 10 metre, uh, 10 metre antenna on 20 metres. <laughs> And it's VK7RG talking to him, which we're not going to hear Rod. Uh, but um, I know Rod's been doing a bit on 20 metres lately, and he's obviously doing well. Anyway, so the... I don't think there's much else happening on here on 20 metres on this antenna. Uh, we're on 7 metres, see if there's anything happening, but we're at that sort of silly time where not much happens... Um, uh, it's weird, from about oh, midday through to about 4pm, 40 goes a bit quiet, um, and then starts to peak up with the different nets and groups. Obviously you've got Ron's net in the morning, but um, uh, but yeah, no, just uh, having a little bit of a play. Okay, so I'm turning that just down a bit, little bit. Pretty well appointed um, with just about everything that you wanted. Um, the filtering system obviously uh, was, was quite comprehensive. Um, AGC um, very much able to be switched um, slow mid high the fast slow mid fast even uh, noise blanker one and two um, so you had um, two levels of noise blanking and um, obviously the processor uh, mic and power output and power output a lot of people under the misconception these things do 200 plus watts but um, from memory the 950 I thought was um, was actually 150 plus, <laughs> around 150 plus watts. I, I um, don't remember seeing one do 200 watts. I just um, probably need to check a book on that to be 100% sure. Uh, all mode, so you know, AM, FM, etc., etc., um, and your little Morse code, as you're hearing there, and uh, back up we go. Uh, dual receive, which was the, the really, you know, sort of popular part of the uh, the 950 SDX um, quite useful uh, very easy to run around as far as bands etc you could just quickly you know chuck yourself in wherever you wanted to go bingo you were you were there and it happened all very fast and um, then you had the little sort of A equals B so you can just change over and that didn't quite work why is that that's because uh, I'm not actually doing A equals B there now that's A equals B, sorry, VFO uh, there, A is the same as VFO A. Um, and the sub-receiver, sorry, it doesn't change when you do A equals B. It's all right. Um, you can do keypad entry as well with it. So um, say you want to put uh, 28 decimal 490000, enter, there we go. Uh, although putting the last digit in will enter quite okay. Now, a little bit of a... Now, see that noise there? Have a look at this. This is my neighbour's electric fence, I'd say. So, put the noise blanker in. Gone. Noise blankers on these things were fantastic, really were. So if you had a, a neighbour with an electric fence, etc., etc., you could um, uh, get rid of it quite easily. They really were very good for that. Uh, usual sort of controls on there, uh, you know, notch, squelch, um, squelch, etc. Turn that down there. Um, you had a, a sub receiver control, so that actually brought up your sub receiver. So we're listening to 7097 there on that receive, uh, 7114 on the other, and we control that between these two controls here. So there's uh, receiver B. Well, it's actually the second receiver. <laughs> it's not really, uh, anyway, um, we'll call it B for now. And then the main one is control from just there. So very much, um, you know, this is um, Kenwood's flagship that really did have quite a few nice features. The slope tune was nice, um, actually quite usable in that um, it really needed a signal to, but as you can see, it's just changing the width. And um, then you had some CW controls here. That were very. I'm not a great CW man, so I won't even try to explain what I don't know. Um, 
Now, unlike most of the flagship radios, um, these actually did come with a mic. Um, very unusual. Uh, but um, a lot of the flagship um, radios didn't come with mics with um, AC and Icon, but Kenwood actually did give you a hand mic. They thought you might actually want to use it. It's quite neat, you know, so absolutely. So let's just have a quick look. I, I can't, unfortunately, um, put a lot of, uh, go to full power on this one on my analyzer. I'm just thinking what I might do. Actually, I'll just do something that will fix that. Okay, so for the uh, sake of um, just uh, actually getting a bit of a power output out of this, so I'm pretty sure it was about 150 watts. I've just hooked up um, one of our um, little um, uh, imports, <laughs> little meters, which is a bit of a handy at times. Um, the problem with your analyzers is they go to 124.9 watts and then they they just get very hot and you've got to be very careful when you're you know, starting to put a you know, full carrier into them. Uh, the the analyzers uh, really do mean... 125 watt max it's you know a few seconds that's about it so um, I'm on FM on uh, 10 meters and I thought we'll just give you a bit of an idea of um, FM power and there we go 151 watts which yeah I would have expected that and that's pretty typical of one now if I go to upper sideband and we put a bit of processing on for a bit of fun there we go hello one two hello hello Very slow meter, this digital meter, to be honest. Um, but anyway, it gives you an idea. Sort of getting up to 148 then on its peak. But um, but yeah, look, these... And that's on 10 meters. You'd normally expect you'll get a little bit more down on, uh, you know, 40 and 80 meters, etc., etc. So certainly um, um, not bad. I wouldn't mind just having a little look at the, how the receiver fares compared to things we've tested lately. Well, to be expected, they do have a super hot receiver. I'm actually getting about S1 at 0.5 a microvolt and I can still hear it I probably lost the S1 now yeah but still still hearing it oh I'm actually still hearing still hearing that at 0.05 my goodness yeah yeah that's 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 really a top receiver all right let's just turn that noise off yeah, look, I, I look. I was always expecting the Kenwood receiver when you start playing with analyzers to to do extremely well, but that is extremely good. Uh, yeah, very good actually. Um, and uh, certainly um, uh, getting receivers these days to be, you know, this good. It, it's hard because we've gone to a world of SDR now, and sometimes doing the comparisons, you know, can be a little bit interesting. Um, SDR certainly got its, you know, big positives, no question, but. Sometimes I don't know. Sometimes the the, um, uh, the old world of uh, these super hit receivers and filters and lots of different ways to to get yourself into you know into the clear and and really uh, you know hearing signals. Uh, these were these were pretty good, actually, extremely good. I I, I personally um, prefer using something like a. Uh, you know, 950 SDX and even, say, my IC7850 at times. And that's just a nostalgic part of me that enjoys playing, you know, and we're all a little bit like that. Um, the other thing about these, they had a 48-volt uh, final, so uh, certainly this was the difference between the 950 SDX and the 950SD or 950S. Um, so always bear that in mind. There's, it's an extremely clean output stage on these things. Uh, a lot of people like the 950 SDX also for doing... ESSB for doing um, lots of you know playing around with audio on uh, various bands. Uh, there's quite a, a net of people these days that are having a good play with um, you know various um, uh, various uh, modules and bits to uh, and parametric equalizers and, and stacks a bit. So uh, yeah, pretty pretty exciting stuff. Uh, some of that. Um, I've I've been playing a little with it, not a lot, so I won't sort of claim to be any you know great expert on it. But anyway, that is the TS950, <clears throat> excuse me, SDX. They're a nice radio. They really are. And, uh, you know, sort of, um, and the thing is that, you know, getting getting that label there, the 950 SDX is really hard these days. It's just, just one of those radios that just does not uh, come up very often. All right, well, this is just a very brief look. I mean, you could spend hours on one of these things, but uh, this is a, just a little brief look at uh, what 9, 950 SDX does and why people were, you know, um, fairly keen to uh, 
to put one in their radio shack. So uh, who knows? All right. All the best. 73 to you from VK3 Charlie Mike. Please subscribe and thanks very much for all your support. Cheers.